Aloha and welcome. Thanks for your consideration of the views expressed in this think tech commentary, which we are calling a surprise for Donald. The election is coming very soon. Our country is steeped in anxiety and it's hard to imagine a soft landing. As much as you want to assume that the people around you are rational, you can't. You want them to understand that Kamala Harris is the only candidate worth considering. But every time you turn around there's a Trumper who believes all the lies Trump has been spreading. What oh what is going on? And what oh what can we do? This commentary tries to take stock of what is happening and what we can make of the future. Here are some thoughts about our current national situation going into the election, only a few days away. As someone who participates in a variety of talk shows on American issues and America's place in the world, I am very concerned about where we are. I am concerned about the threats that Donald Trump has made, and how he and his followers will act on those threats. I am concerned that the media has not done a good job in reporting and evaluating what he has been saying and threatening. I am profoundly disappointed in the Los Angeles Times and the Washington Post. They both failed to print endorsements of Kamala Harris that were written by their editorial boards. This was apparently because Trump had intimidated their owners. I am concerned that if Trump wins or otherwise takes power, all the media will be under his thumb and we will never be able to find out what is really going on, or what he is doing, and that the First Amendment will be sorely compromised. This, of course, is the mark of autocracy and fascism. In a larger sense, I am concerned that if Trump wins or again takes power, our lives and liberties will be at great risk, and that we will lose the rights and benefits we have had, and the protections of our constitution, our rule of law, and our democracy. I am concerned that we will wind up living under the kind of oppressive dictatorships we saw in Europe. We all need to be aware of these risks, and we all need to think of what could happen under Trump. Regrettably, we have had a decade of divisiveness, hate, bigotry, and contention, where we have been threatened daily by Trump's madness, and inmates who would like to run the asylum, and take the power and money. But we still have our precious union and we still have the vote. We still have values that call for us to care for others. We still have the possibility of a moment of quiet reflection, far from the madding crowd. We still have the protection and liberation of the secret ballot, whether exercised at home or in the sanctity of a voting place. It's a truly magnificent expression of our democracy, and the peaceful transfer of power. We still have a bedrock belief in honesty and morality, whether from home and family, training, experience, personal religion or otherwise. We still have the possibility of reaching for the truth, recognizing and accepting it, and letting it come through in our thoughts and actions. In these difficult times, what a beautiful surprise for us to do just that. What a beautiful surprise for our families, our community and our country. What a beautiful surprise for us to demonstrate to Donald Trump that we can in fact think and act for ourselves. Now is the time for us to see the truth and enjoy the enlightenment of the process. Let Donald Trump see what we are really made of. Let the country revel in rationality. America, God shed his grace on thee. And on all of us. Yes, we do believe in ourselves, and in America, thus making America great, as great as it has ever been, and far greater than it was under Trump. Let's talk more about voting, and how people, including people on the fence, should approach it. When election day comes, make damn sure you vote. And when you're filling out your ballot, make sure to remember who you are, and who we all are as a nation, and how we got here. Take a moment to think about what you're doing and how it will affect the people around you. Don't just throw your vote away. Use it wisely. This is your opportunity to thoughtfully evaluate the choices, and do the right and pono thing. Not only for yourself, but for your children and grandchildren, who need you to protect and preserve their rights and their country. They want you to take all of this very seriously, and so do we. Chaos is not a good option for any of us. 
Think first about qualifications and moral values, but not race or ethnicity. Think about mental and physical fitness. Think about what will happen the day after the election, and for that matter the day after the term. Given our divisiveness, we need a society that will allow us to reaffirm our principles. Most important of all, don't be taken in. Use your God-given ability to read about what is going on, and do critical thinking. Don't let a bad-tempered candidate fool you. Be sure to identify and reject false promises and lies. This is your chance to be a responsible person and a responsible citizen, and show the world what you are made of. And what we are collectively made of as a nation. In the solitude and clarity of the moment, you may find that you cannot in good faith and conscience vote for a cult, or for someone who lies and disrespects those around him, who has been found guilty of various criminal acts, who threatens retribution to those who oppose him, and who would use the power of the office only for himself, and not for the benefit of others. When you think about it, you may find you don't want to vote for someone who wants to be a Hitler, or who wants to upend the country, or the global order. You may realize that it is better to vote for a candidate who is decent, caring, and kind. Isn't that a more patriotic choice? Isn't that what you were raised to do? Don't let us down. Let the truth come through. Let it ring from sea to shining sea. We're counting on you, just as your family is, and just as you should be counting on yourself. The stakes are as high as they can be. So when you exercise your vote, you should be the very best you can be. Okay, that's it for this commentary. But there's so much more in our huge collection of think tech commentaries, and in our legacy collection of think tech talk shows. You can check them out on thinktechhawaii.com and youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks for your consideration of the views expressed in this Think Tech commentary, which we are calling a surprise for Donald. We look forward to seeing you again soon for the next one. Aloha!